The Tangent Egg Podcast is aimed at a mature audience. It contains themes that are not appropriate for all listeners. It's important to note that we are not experts. We routinely have no idea what we're talking about and are just three idiots sitting around a table. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to the Tangent Egg Podcast. I'm Seth, and this week I'm not dying, which is really good. Yay! And it's a bonus, at, yeah. <laughs> as always, I'm joined by John Doe and Swoosh. Hello. G'day. Right, so this week we've got some more trailer stuff to go through, but first I want to quickly punch through a couple quick things. Uh, of course, a lot of people have been pretty hyped this week because we had the cyberpunk anime come out, and it's really, really good. I've uh, still not... yet to watch that one, but I've heard good things. Well, because Me we're too. not behind it's a on spoiler my list area. Of shame. It's yeah. We're not behind a spoiler area, so I'm not going to spoil jack shit about it. Other than say, it is genuinely a really good series the uh, picking studio trigger to do the animation for it uh most known for killer kill and gorilla gun uh it was a great choice the the hyper stylization and crazy over the top for all the action and the cybernetics was really really fucking good um we actually get a really good deep dive into uh kind of what cyber psychosis is more like for the actual person going through it which was really interesting um, yeah, all the action's great, the story's really good. It's it's an excellent series. There's a couple of little things I'm a bit meh about, mostly to do with the time skip, but eh, they've only got so many episodes and they've got to get to the end point eventually, so... <coughs> From what it, I heard, yeah. it's it's very much what people wanted to be able to do in, in Cyberpunk. Like, yeah. We wanted these kinds of characters. We wanted to be able to do these kinds of things. Uh, so it's like... Look at what this person can do with these things we kind of maybe touched on in the show, in the game. And it's provided a massive resurgence for, for Cyberpunk. Like, the game's gone back to number one single-player game on Steam. Yeah. Well, they dropped a big update alongside Edge Runners yeah. coming out, as well as Easter egg content for the game for Edge Runners. So, they... Did they played their cards right for, for getting the oh, interest back absolutely in the did, And they needed to. Like, yeah. for everything the game was hyped up to be, it's actually... Like playing through it now actually feels like almost what they promised it well, would promised. be. And it's still don't think it's quite there, but it's a hell of a lot closer than it was That's when good. it freaking launched. But it I'll is a it up bloody again. good game now. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Well, I mean, th- this is following on to the other thing I want to talk about about Cyberpunk, which is there's some good slash bad news depending on how you, you want to look at it. Mm. Of course, we got the big trailer for the new DLC that's coming out uh, last week, which was very interesting, and a lot of people like myself were like, when that comes out, I'm going back. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> oh, right sorry. Down. Dying a little bit. <clears throat> I'm not completely there. You can edit that out. You'd be right. <clears throat> oh, I can't now. We brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> Continuity. <laughs> um, the other thing I wanted to mention, uh, they, they announced that the Nugu DLC will not be coming to previous gen consoles. Now, that is a bit... I'm sure there's probably a lot of people like, oh, fuck you, that's a, bit of, that's a real dick move. Look, man, the game barely ran on the previous content consoles, and they've spent, yeah. what, over a year trying to get it up to snuff? And you want them to take the new brand spanking new DLC that they know won't run and force it on there again? The only issue I have with that is it's still kind of hard to find a PS5. Yeah. Like, sure, I, I get that, but at the same time, we can't find the console this runs Well, on. I mean, you can there, play there Xbox. There is a solution, yeah. Buy true. an Xbox and Game Pass. Be done. Because yeah, I'm pretty... True. Is Cyberpunk on Game Pass? I don't know, but I have Game Pass, so give me two shakes and I'll have a quick squeeze. We all have um, it now. We've all joined like, the cult. <laughs> when, uh... When they first announced <coughs> Cyberpunk, it was meant to have the same uh, more DLC than The Witcher Three, yeah, and which came like which had was it two or three major DLC packs, and for s- the first sixteen weeks of launch came with free DLC every week, pretty much or yeah. however long that mm. took. And I don't think they've done the the sixteen free DLCs, no. and I think they've said there's only going to be one major DLC yeah, launch, the one that's coming, which yeah. All right, and they've, at least they're now saying they're actually coming out and saying what you're going to get. Mm. Um, they're currently working on a new game plus, which has been mm-hmm. one of the features that a lot of people have been crying out for. Yeah. So, I mean, so one, of no, the, one of the they're big dropping the red engine, and so they're going to go to Unreal Five, I think it is, 
and I, I don't know about hopefully that. Hopefully, they can do some. Well, that's one of the things they said. Uh, they're going to stop development on yeah. our Red Engine, and their next few games are going to be on Unreal Five. Uh, I mean, yeah. I'm not arguing with that. See, I would rather yeah. Bethesda do that before Red Engine, but still, like, can we just slap whoever keeps putting Bethesda games in their own engine? Just stop. It's I bad. mean, hopefully that's what Microsoft's going to do. Um, we can hope. I mean, one of the the big uh, things that came in the newest update for for Cyberpunk is they finally put Transmog in. Yeah, it's taken them this long, but yay! <laughs> I mean, I'm it's no still long, good. I no longer either have to sacrifice armor for looks, mm. <laughs> or just go around looking like absolute trash. Like I don't exactly play it for dress up simulator, but it's still good, nice to look good. Even Sometimes you, really you want to make a dramatic much. entrance. Like you want to yeah. look dramatic as hell and edge lordy when you kick in the door and kill everyone. <laughs> like that's how this works. This is an escape fantasy. <laughs> so um, yeah, that that's just the big thing that they've announced. It's not going to the old consoles, and I'm like, I look, I play on PC, and yeah. I got super lucky and didn't have really any problems at launch with Cyberpunk. So I will freely admit I'm a kind of biased on that game. I enjoyed it. Um, but I enjoyed it. So, I just came across a lot of bugs that stopped me from playing and doing what I wanted to do, and I'm glad they fixed a, majority yeah. of those. I played so, on PS4 for a while and wanted to die. But with the free uh, upgrade paths to go to the PS5 or the newer yeah. Xboxes, it's a pretty like like again you still need to have those consoles, but at least it's free to upgrade. They're they're really trying to take the barriers best away they can to like come play it on the thing that runs it better. Yeah. Um. And unfortunately, yeah, they're they're just not going backwards compatible with the DLC. It's just but coming to the new stuff on the good old PC. There comes a point where they sort of have to like <coughs> step away from and... the old generation. Like, yeah. so many new games are coming out on the old generation too, and that's surely just got to be holding them back to a point. Oh yeah, definitely. They can't optimize them as best as they, they want to, but at the no. same time, they do feel obligated to since their production for the PS5 has been so lackluster. Mm. Oh, like, sure, but like, old generations, like, the going from the original Xbox to the 360, mm. like, I think you got six months or maybe a year of conjoined game releases, and then nothing. It's yeah. done. It's and over. They cut it. Same as going from PS2 to 3, and 3 to 4. Mm. Like, there were a little bit of crossover between 3 and 4, but there comes a point where you just got to cut the tie and be done with it. Like, yeah, pretty much. The, and the consoles and have been out for a little while now. Like, I have a PS5. I managed to like find one magically. I, I may or may not have sold You're welcome. Soul for it. But at this point, I would have been better to grab a P- uh, an Xbox or something because I would have had Game Pass at that point. <laughs> but yeah, no, if you can't find a PlayStation, get the, get the Xbox. Do it. Oh, and uh, it's not on Game Pass. Oh. It isn't. Oh. Well, if they if they want to increase fucking play account, that's that'd be the next step. <laughs> when the the DLC comes oh, out, throw it on Play Pass for three three to six months. Um, what was it? Um, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, because of the lackluster sales of uh, lackluster performance of Avengers, had some trouble at the start due to sales. Yeah, and then it dropped on Game Pass and was just like to the moon. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, man. it was a that great game. Was absolutely <laughs> amazing. It's a wonderful game, and I kind of want more of it. Yeah, right, so, an uh, actual enjoyable campaign. Yeah, yeah. who would have thought? Uh, so, one other thing before we get into the big old trailer pile we're going to do. A uh, little bit of update on Overwatch 2. Uh, oh, yeah. We were discussing a little while ago about how they're going to be putting champions behind the battle paths. Yeah. We've got a little bit of information about how that's going to work. So... They use the example of one of the new heroes that's coming out. It's a support hero, it's brand new, so everyone's going to want to play up, so on and so forth. So you can either spend $10 and get the premium battle pass, which will automatically unlock this new hero. Or you have to progress through the battle pass. How far through the battle pass do you think you need to get? Now, the battle pass has 80 tiers. Well, for Battlefield 2042, I think it's level four four for the new character uh previous season pass where they had characters it's usually been like one of the first couple surely yeah so it's not front end. it's not okay where have they put it have a guess swoosh like like dan right. said the first four like, and i've clearly said that it's for, not 
yeah so battlefield i think is level four for the for the new character like anything more than that is just like why the fuck like well, i don't want to keep have, playing your game without the new thing they have their thing was always sixes it would be six in nope more or less more fuck 20. Oh, really more 20 more no. 40 this is, out of, this is out of 80 oh out of 80 uh okay we'll 80 go with... <laughs> no too high it's not 80 it's not the last thing 60 we'll go 60 little too high it's 55 wow really you gotta run through 55 levels of shit before you get the one thing you actually probably play yep. the battle pass for yep. what the fuck so yeah, that's tries. or like, pony up 10 bucks so I, it's not exa- it's not behind a paywall it's behind a shit wall unless you yeah. want to pay for it like I swear to god that's just I played a lot of Overwatch like the original that's fucked like, oh and I Overwatch was... uh, one dies on the 2nd of August yeah, yeah so yeah, just yeah, straight out turn it off it. yeah so, so you for the people that still play Overwatch 1 that spent a lot of money on it it's now worth nothing now obsolete thank god I never spent a cent on that game well, apart from buying it. So yeah, that's the like that's the bullshit they've decided to do. New hero, super deep in the battle pass. It's not even like ten or something. Fifty five. Did, did we expect better from people <coughs> at this point? Like So like anyone that plays that is like they're gonna look around and see the new character and so, say, Oh, I don't really want to spend the ten bucks. Oh, I've got to drag through all this shit. Um it's just easier to spend the ten dollars than to spend fucking that's two what weeks of for, guarantee yeah that's like, exactly absolute, why they've done it it's basic right. freemium stuff yeah yeah problem is this, for anyone trying to get that without paying the 10 bucks by the time you get 50 missions deep they'll already have built the counterculture for the new character yeah so the second and you get that character you can't use it because it'll be out of meta already well, the, like, usually when a character first drops in most games, they're a little OP. They haven't been completely fucking mm. balanced in. Mm. So unless you spend that money in that first week and get them before they patch the guts out of them, like, after that patch, it's like, oh, well, you may as well play any other character. Before that, oh, shit, the new character is fucking awesome. Oh, you got to spend 10 bucks because you're not going to unlock them in time otherwise. Yeah. Mm. It's... Everything it's about like that is moves. fucking scummy. This is how yeah. they're going to support the fact that it's now free to play instead of, you know, pay 60 bucks. Yeah. Which is annoying as fuck, but at the same time, like, I can see why they've done it. I don't agree with why they've done it, but I can see it. There's another hero shooter that's very similar to Overwatch. Fucking Paladins, and they do yep. it better. Like, that at least was pretty they, good, actually. I, I enjoyed Paladins <laughs> more than I enjoyed Overwatch. I, I dumped more time into it. But at least you only buy skins in that, not fucking new characters. They yeah. tend to drop a new character and you just get it. At least you could just, like, you could buy specific skins on Paladins as well. You weren't having to hunt through loot boxes hoping to get the skin yeah. you wanted. Like, that was the most uh, annoying that's thing. That's just scummy on so many levels. Like, just mm. the whole... But like, you can do this free, or you can give us money. Ugh, we- that's shit. It's like that right. guy from Democracy is just, we like money. <laughs> Shall we move on to the trailer sets we have to look at this evening? Was there yep. another thing about Ezra Miller that we had an update for? Is that? Uh, I'm finding having some trouble uh, getting uh, confirmable details on that. But if you uh, want to know the thing I was reading, because we were talking a little bit before the podcast started, um, it seems like he like the the place he went in Vermont. That we were like, what the fuck is he doing in Vermont? Hmm. Apparently, he has a farm there, and. That's where he took. Like, if you also remember when he was in Hawaii, he quote unquote abducted a ah. mother and her children. Mm. Apparently, he took the, them to this farm, and this farm has like guns just lying around everywhere. Sounds, sounds safe very for a culty. child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Does um, this farm have a very large compound esque wall? <laughs> I look. I, I don't know. I wasn't able to like. I only read like one article. I couldn't find anything else verifying it. So a, I a wasn't going to bring it up. A lot of pre-made but... Kool Aid that you drink anytime <laughs> you'd like. <laughs> I'll just start so, when they start calling him father. That's when we start getting a bit worried there. Well, apparently he refers to himself as uh, God and Satan. So it's a oh. cult. It's a cult. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's I'm already not, a cult. I'm not saying shit because I ain't got enough information to make any judgment calls in here. You know, giant piles yeah. of salt. 
But that's, this is this is the buzz right now. That's throwing up about as many red flags as the Catholic Church begging people to have more kids. Mm. <laughs> Which Bring is also a thing that happened recently. <laughs> <laughs> Catholic Church well, is like, people need to have more children. Like, we really don't. There's already too many people on this planet. Uh, well, we're uh, done. For, the, for the first time in America's history, the uh, Catholic Church numbers have gone down. In a, yeah. their last census, it's gone down by like, I think it was 15 or 20 percent from what it was in previous years. So, like, yeah. Well, every, every time we have a census, there's always that big push from like any religious thing. No, no, don't say, you know, just say this in case you, if you're on the fence. And all the atheists going, please don't say Jedi unless you actually follow that thing because we need the numbers. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> don't put Jedi down. Just don't. Yeah at all it is technically a religion in Australia because someone paid the money to be tax exempt so yeah anyway let's get on to the trailer roundups we'll do the shorter one first which is Sony's State of Play State of Play so the first thing they showed off was Tekken 8 the new Tekken it's Tekken yeah, yeah and it looks like Tekken and it just seems like more Tekken I swear I'm... it's they've taken the basic models of from like the older games and then just put a filter on it to make it smoother because they still look well, blocky they just put a not... lens flare on it yeah it's like very strange art style it looks very odd I, I don't know it, like I don't know if you could change it though because like that art style like is Tekken oh yeah it's definitely iconic to Tekken but they've taken it to a point of almost the uncanny valley where it's like you get a bit close to real but keeping it trying to keep it stylized guys you're treading that line and it's a bit concerning <laughs> there, it's at the point like watching it they could pretty much just remove all the graphics have two hitboxes standing in front of each other and to yeah. me it wouldn't look much different pretty much just add I a mean, bright lens flare behind it and eh it's Tekken also the, just the trailer looks like so much angst I swear to god it's just <laughs> angst but yeah <laughs> Uh, next up was the Star Wars VR game that's coming to PlayStation. Yay! Who cares? I mean, like, it, it's Star Wars. I like Star Wars. It's fun. But I don't have a VR setup, so... I'm um, probably not going to play it. I mean, if it was coming to PC, I'd have picked it up and given it a squeeze, but they, they decided they didn't want to do that, so... Hmm. And looking at it, it's still <coughs> not a VR lightsaber, Jules. It's... A blaster game again. Yep. Yeah, they still can't get the fucking controls right for the lightsaber. Apparently, no. Which is weird because Beat Saber exists. Exactly, that does lightsabers perfectly. Yeah. Mm. Oh well. Disappointing. Uh, next up, we have what is actually a remake. Uh, mm. Like a Dragon Ishin is a remake of a Japan only. Uh, Wait, wasn't the next thing instead of play the uh, virtual tabletop? It was a virtual tabletop. Did I miss it? Oh yeah, it's at. Uh... Oh yeah, sorry, my bad. Demo. I missed that one. But yeah, yeah it's a that's virtual it's tabletop. just a VTT. It looks like it's already got a, a campaign and a whole story and thing you play. So it's not like you make your own world, but the actual Basically. minis are animated, unlike yeah, that. The other one. The other one that we watched where it's uh, XCOM minis. Yeah. yeah. This actually looks like someone's made a VTT, they've played a campaign on it, and they've animated it. Actually, it looks entertaining, but looks I fun. think it might actually be a VR game. It is. It's it a is. VR game only. But that that like, could work as just a desktop game, just for shits and giggles. Yeah, I think it's a canned adventure, but run by a, basically a computer. There's no actual DM, which I like the idea of. But that it could... feels like a waste for VR, though. Oh, oh yeah. it does. That could just be a desk, like a, a Steam game where you just you play it. If I could make a, a dungeon and then have a half a dozen people play through it, that'd be entertaining. Hmm. That'd be great. Because you know, if I'm playing in VR, I want to play something more VR-y, not no. this. <laughs> yeah, I've but got my VR controller tablet. to roll virtual dice. Just shake the controller. I, that, that's the gameplay loop right there. They're spending a lot of money to make something that already exists. Virtual tabletop is a thing, and you can get basically any game you want in that system. Mm. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Or, I don't know, get a 3D printer and 
play a fucking tabletop game. Yeah, yeah. that also happens. <laughs> so, uh, sorry for my flub on that. You could catch there, guys. Uh, now, the next thing was like a dragon inshin. You're um, onto you, Seth. We're onto you. We're, which is, uh, look, look, fuck you, I like the Yakuza games, and this is a remake <laughs> of a Yakuza game I haven't gotten to play, okay? Fuck you off. You were just too excited, that's all it was. <laughs> it does but look I fun, though. Like... I, I really love the Yakuza games, and this is one that didn't leave Japan, and now is, and we're going to get to play it, and it's uh, like a, an old-timey period um, setting. So, you know, crazy shenanigans in old-time China. Oh, Japan. Looks and fun. Just a- Pointed that not fighting the Axe Clan, because. <laughs> but I know that's Way more of a palm. China thing. Yeah. <laughs> Can't so, yeah. Looks such a good movie. Uh, next thing is the new trailer for Hogwarts, which is getting really horror vibes, which is not what I was expecting. Like I knew it they took it a little is. darker in the last trailer, but this one's like, I was almost ready to believe that this was like. I think when I first saw this. I was like, oh, shit, are we getting alone in the dark again? Well, um, I thought it was a, um... That this new one was going to be at Hogwarts, but apparently you're buying a shop and, like, doing stuff in there instead. Yeah, no, it's much more about the world, not just Hogwarts. Which I'm okay with. Like, if it weren't for the fact that we were giving J.K. Rowling money, I'd be more happy about it. Yeah. But why are they only really showing any story for Slytherin? Like, I'm... I I'm honestly genuinely... don't... I don't give a shit... The, my no. biggest issue would simply be like if they actually want to do other houses, don't. Yeah, I swear no, that one pops up looking blue. But they've already notice. stated that you can like pick your own house. There's a website you can go to and do the whole fucking pick your uh, own fucking house thing already. Yeah. So they've already said that you can pick a house, but they're only showing shit for Slytherin. You know what it might be? They're trying to give like make Slytherin look better again. It's like okay, maybe they're not all <laughs> evil. Because um, I would like he's to a see good a kid a, in Slytherin. Yeah. yeah, no, I would like to see this game where it's like written for a Slytherin, where it's like, all right, you have to choose between good and evil, like because it's always you're already treated evil because you come from Slytherin, like that weird mentality for the rest of the wizards. Ah, oh, we can't trust you. You you wear green. Like it was a school house, motherfucker. Like it's not that yeah. important. Like that'd be me. Like here in Australia, we do have I houses and stuff like, at sporting school. house like they only yeah. come out during sport yeah and that would be like me discriminating against someone because they were in a different house well after like meeting someone from my old high school is like oh you were in that one can't trust you it's like, yeah but that would require that, that that's not quite the same because the Slytherin house legitimately does tend to get a lot of the shit kids in it but you do have the problem of like well what did we do well we took some shit kids and some not shit kids and we put them all in a basement and let them scheme together. Yeah, yeah they're probably all going to turn into shit kids and then shit adults. <laughs> also, how did Crab and Goyle end up in in Slytherin? They were not cunning. They were fucking idiots. They should have been Hufflepuff to the end. Because uh, every Slytherin. house needs minions. There. <laughs> yeah, good point. <laughs> anyway. So, uh, next up was Pacific Drive. And I have literally no idea what this is. I don't it's know. It's like, it like a, a driving third... game, like a horror yeah. driving game. Yeah, um, I don't know. It's very I've... much third per- I, I was like first person driving, which I really can't be bothered doing. I've seen some stuff where they've said like the only thing, the only companion you'll have on this entire drive is the car. Mm. So it's like, what? What is this thing? I mean, Does I it don't talk? know. Is this like a Night Rider game? I like... don't know. Hmm. But like some of the stuff showing up looks interesting. Like yeah. I don't know why the world is exploding around you, but I could be keen to find out. Yeah. I'm just not a huge fan of like first person driving because I suck at it. I mean that's fair. But it that's... looks interesting. I'll give it that. Um, I think the next actual uh, the next thing they blare on about is their new fucking. Uh, Sony Plus stuff, but we don't care about that. The next thing is the next actual Sony Plus game. is not a, a Game Pass competitor. It might be a Nintendo Plus competitor, but uh, more to the point that just like in Australia, it's even worse. Uh, the next one was um, and sorry, I was skipping ahead. Go on. Uh, so and like the big thing they have in this one is simply that like now you can get achievements, which can appear as little rewards that you can collect, like hey, Gatchaban shit. 
it's so stupid. Like, I don't understand why they bothered even bringing it up. It's like one of those things you stealth release, and then people are like, ooh! Ooh, yeah. here's a little extra, not something you announce at a thing going, we're doing mm. this. Like, That's when and- you know they're running out of shit to announce this year. Like, yeah. oh, fuck, what do we do? Um, I do believe the next one was Sin Duality? Yes, which is very much a Dark Souls mecha. Like, from more I look at it, it's like, oh, this is just dodgy rolling mechanics. They're like, they also go around, it looks like they're gathering materials and, like, it's got a little floaty girl floating, like, following yeah, the map yeah. around. I'm, I have no idea what this game is actually meant to be, whether it's a, an open world story driven thing or if it's just. See, go out and find shit. The thing I'm getting kind of vibes wise, and I don't know if you guys ever played. Do you guys ever play Vanquish? Yes. yes. I'm getting kind of Vanquish vibes with all the dodging and sliding around with guns. Yeah. Yeah, but this time you have a mech. <coughs> I mean, you're in a mech suit in Vanquish. True. But this one the has... The mechanics in Vanquish was so good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, look, I'm honestly annoyed that Platinum never did a follow-up to Vanquish, because Vanquish was great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, next up we had... Uh, Stellar Blade. Uh, which was something that I was interested in because uh, the last time I saw anything about it, it hadn't said it was a PlayStation exclusive yet. Mm. And then at the end of this trailer, they're like PS5 exclusive. I'm like, damn it, because I was actually kind of interested in this game. What is this one? Like, there's a lot of talking in this trailer. A uh, high energy character action game. Oh, okay, fair. But like, it looks interesting. I mean, it does. And I, like I said, I was actually very interested to check it out. Oh, that's right. This when is the one that was Zion, and I was like instantly thinking of the Matrix, especially with the ship mm. they're in. Mm. Like, I thought this was a Matrix game for a second because of Zion and the thing they fly in on. Mm. But it does look interesting. <coughs> I might give that a shot, actually. Mm. Um, next up is actually probably the one out of this whole thing that I'm the most interested in that I didn't already know about, which is Rise of the Ronin. Um. I, I, it's another game that's giving me very strong Tsushima vibes. A little bit, yeah. I mean, the bit where he's on the horse running up the, the cliff, it's just like, mm. Mm, I think I've seen this before somewhere. Is this a new <laughs> title, or is it a... Um... Yep, no, brand new property. Okay, because like... Put out by Koei Tecmo and Team Ninja. Like, it's not as pretty as Tsushima, but I do like the look of it. It's also going for a little more of the character action style as opposed to the realism. Yeah. I mean, there's a, a bit where, like, he, like, slashes a guy in the air and then, like, flips over him and drives him into the ground. It's like, yeah, it's it's going for a little more, um, uh... Hack slash action. action. Yeah. A, a little more of, like, that, that wire food sort of vibe. And, I mean, there's the bit where he pulls out the big glider and shit and floats over the city, so... Yeah, that, I will say that glider looks great to me. <laughs> yeah, that glider mm. looks fucking mint, too. I like the look of that thing. Is it just me, or does it remind you of a moth? A little bit, yeah. Like, moth or a hawk, something like that. It's mm. very... I like it, it looks good. But no, so, yeah, I'm kind of keen for this. Yeah, I'm, I'm very interested to keep an eye on on that one. It will scratch the Ghost of Tsushima <laughs> itch long enough for us to get more information about the new one. <laughs> I mean, again, I'm slightly annoyed. It's another PlayStation 5 exclusive, and I do not own a PlayStation 5. But... It's coming out like 2024, so maybe yeah. they'll exist in the world for me to purchase so by then. Give it five maybe. years, you'll be able to play it on PC. <laughs> no, they'll bring out the PlayStation 6, and then you'll be able to get a 5. <laughs> and of course, maybe. this state of play rounds out with the new trailer for God of War. Uh, um, also, boy! a God of War controller. Yay! Oh, yeah, yeah. so happy. <laughs> I mean, like, I'm keen for more God of War. Like, I'm going to play through the one before just before this all you know, releases because I want that um, I'm probably going to end up and this kind of uh, I'm playing into that discussion we had earlier in the episode I will probably end up schlubbing it and trying to play it on a PS4 <laughs> probably but I well, want the uh, if you want to play it play it wherever you can I, I want to but I'll probably end up waiting for it to drop on PC <laughs> Well, that was the one thing that I thought was particularly MIA from the state of play was any further information about their their uh, attempts to go to PC. Uh, in a talk, they did give a release date for the Uncharted thing coming to PC. Yeah, because it didn't month. actually have. Yeah, so they they gave that date, 
but they haven't said anything else that's coming to PC, which sort mm. of sucks because there's a couple of games I want to play, but I don't want to buy a brand new console just to play them. I think yeah. we're not going to find out about that until they're ready to actually talk about the potential of their PC platform, which people yeah. have data mined from Spider Man to be yeah. an existing product. That's going to so, be fun. I think that's when we're going to hear more about PC PlayStation releases. Although they did stealth release um, uh, the two spin off games for Yakuza Judgment just on Steam with no fanfare. They just dropped them out. <laughs> Those <laughs> were PlayStation exclusives. Nice. Maybe they're hoping no one would pay attention. Like, just put that over there. Just, if they do, if we announce it, they'll ask about other things. Maybe someone from marketing may have fucked up. It's like, oh shit, I was meant to submit that. Oh fuck, it's already out. Uh, oh well, enjoy. <laughs> so, we've released. Like you sent the press release out, right? Like, uh, maybe. <laughs> I thought you were no, doing that. No, no, you just said press release, didn't you? So I, I released it. What? <laughs> <laughs> Look, as a big fan of the Yakuza franchise, I didn't think I'd ever get to play the Judgment game, so I'm just super happy they're on PC. Yeah, fair. Right, so that rounds out Sony, and now we've got the Nintendo Direct, which has a lot more content in it. But so many farming simulators. Yeah, it's a little dumb. <laughs> I'm not going And that's kind for someone who enjoys Rune Factory and farming simulators. Yeah, same here. I was looking at it being like, oh, cool, a farming simulator. Maybe I'll get it. I don't know. I'll see how I feel at the time. And, and a third and a fourth. I'm like, Jesus Christ, guys, calm the fuck down. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> holy crap. Anyway, first game up is Fire Emblem Engage, which is the new Fire Emblem game. And I love the Fire Emblem game, so, you know, I'm already on board for this. It looks interesting, but I, I'm not great at Fire Emblem. I'm, it's, not, it's never really gelled with me for some reason. I don't know why. Mm. I mean, that's fair. Not everyone likes that sort of tactics game. Mm. I just happen to, so to me it's just like, yay, more of the thing I like. I think I get distracted too easy, so I just can't focus on them. Like, that's my uh, only issue. Next up was the was It Takes Two, which was a very well-received co-op game that I've never played. Um, no, I'd like, to, come play, to, a Switch, I'd like to give it a go at some point, just never gotten around to it. Yeah. I'm pretty sure, um, it, isn't that on Game Pass? I swear I've seen it. I believe it is. I'm pretty certain it is. Now it's just a, a Switch release for it. Yeah, this is just ah, for cool. the Switch release. I mean, a multiplayer game like that on a portable handheld that you can just link two consoles together very easily, mm. that's a good idea. We may have yeah. to give this one a shot at some point, like maybe stream out thing for it. Mm. Give, it a, give it a glance, because none of us have played it. Hmm. Uh, next one is the new Fatal Frame game. Well, it's not a new Fatal Frame game. It's a remaster of a Fatal Frame game that never got released into the West, so yeah. we're getting it. Um, I don't mind the Fatal Frame games, but I don't go out of my way to play them. They're, they were the ones where you're taking pictures to find the spooky things, yeah? Uh, you take the pictures of the ghost to make them go away. Ah, that's right. I remember one of the... Because like, even ghosts are self-conscious. If it's not a good <laughs> photo, I don't want to see it. <laughs> Ooh, delete that. <laughs> um, next up it's was Ghost the... Insta. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up was the expansion, uh, the season pass advertisement for Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Um, I really hate this character. I don't like its design. I hate the voice. I really don't like it. I haven't played Xenoblade Chronicles 3 yet. I do want to at yeah, some point. But it's got chicken I, legs. I fucking hate this design. It's got, it's got friggin' uh, chopstick <laughs> legs. Yeah. It could stab uh, people with its feet. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm not into it. I still haven't played this new one. Um, apparently it's not bad, though. Oh, yeah, it's reviewing amazingly. Yeah. It's just a shame they brought out a weird... It's like they've taken the core frame of a robot and just given it no armor. Yeah. You should be able to slap some armor onto it. It would look fine. Uh, so next spindly. Up, next up is SpongeBob SquarePants, the Cosmic Shake. Uh, this were, like we didn't know this game was coming out, but I think a lot of people predicted they were doing something like this, given the mm. fact that they did that. Uh, what was it um, Battle for Bikini Bottom rehydrated? Yeah. <coughs> a lot of people had um, uh, guessed that they were priming the pump to do a new game, and I mean here it is. So. I mean, I don't like Spongebob that much, so... 
No. There's a few memes going through it, which looks interesting. Uh, the fact that Patrick is your version of Navi is hilarious to me. But that's that's about it. I don't think I'll be picking it up at any point. Then again, we are not the target audience for this. <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. not. Just like we're not the target audience for the next thing, which is bizarre. Oh, the boxing? Yeah, but yeah. it's based off Fist of the North Star. Yeah, like, that that was always a strange one. Like, I get it, the guy uses boxing in the, the anime, but it's like, this is such a strange thing. Who uh, made more, this? It, it's more that, like... Like, Fist of the North Star, yeah, it, like, it has a lot of meme quality to it. Yeah. But, like, it's not a new show. Most people... Don't, no, I it's don't like think from it, the 80s or 70s or something. It's yeah, really on. It doesn't strike me as that thing that's like, oh, everyone's going to recognize Fist of the North Star. Like, it's such an old property. The only <coughs> thing they can be trying to capitalize on is meme culture. I think that's what's driving that. I look, I don't know, man. Uh, his neck is as wide as his whole head, so there's no like mm. neck to head. And his head just feels <laughs> too small looking at him. It's like... The head is like a half size smaller than it needs to be. Just watching the trailer of it, it's like something just feels odd there. Welcome to Fist of the North Star. <laughs> it's Cell Saga levels of Dragon Ball Z muscle. Like, <laughs> bulk! He doesn't need a head, he's got neck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That He doesn't actually have a head, his face just slipped down. Yeah. Yeah, it's just all neck. That's it. Uh, next up was Oddballers, which just seems to be another, like, party, brawly game. Meh. Yep. Alright, yeah, sure. It's a thing. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna hate on it, but, like, I don't care about these things. They're streamer bait. People will play them yeah. for a month, and then they won't play them anymore. Pretty much. Uh, next up was the Switch release of Tunic, which is actually a pretty good game. People should play it. It's pretty fun. I've seen that popping up somewhere. I don't know where it was but it looks interesting because all you're doing is running through and collecting pages from the manual <coughs> or something to teach you more it, it feels like classic Zelda yeah mm. it does that, that's the idea hey man yeah. just give that a shot yeah it's it really fun pretty. yeah it's good even if you get um, a chance to watch the games done quick watch the tunic one for the devs that is oh, really that so good. good yeah they actually made it for speedrunners to fuck around with <laughs> oh nice which is just a really cool thing so if you get a chance watch it uh, next up was the remakes of Front Mission 1 and 2. Mm. Um, I don't think these actually look very good. No, they, no. They, For a remake, made, they didn't do much. They've remade all the models, but they didn't make any of the animations look any better. Yeah. So, no, it looks like it would have come out on the Wii. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. W- still with the same aesthetic models, everything. <laughs> like, it does not feel like a new generation console release. No, Even for the like, Switch, which hasn't got the highest power, but still. Uh, next up, we've got our first farming simulator game, which is Story of Seasons, A Wonderful Life, where you will go to an idyllic town and run a farm. It looks pretty. But there's not much to say about farming simulators. You go and no. you, uh, you I think have the a only, farm. I think the only thing that's of any note to this thing is that you age. So yeah. if you actually get old... Um, and you have to have a son to keep going and doing the thing. Yeah, so, I mean, that's kind of cool, I guess. It's a fun but, mechanic. Yeah, I mean, look, I don't hate these sort of games. Like, when I was younger, I got, like, super into Harvest Moon. Oh, yeah, same. I um, lost my soul to that. So, I've got no hate to these, and I lost a bunch of time to Stardew Valley as well. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, but it's just like... Eh. I haven't played Stardew... If I was to play another farming simulator, I would go back to Stardew Valley, I think. There's a, a mod that you can play... St- Actually, I'm pretty certain you can just play Stardew multiplayer now. Yeah. Ooh, interesting. Yeah. It's uh, quite entertaining. You can play multiplayer on the Switch in Stardew. And, uh, yeah, my partner and I and the young bloke, we've played quite a bit of it. It's... Nice. Good. <laughs> uh, next up was Splatoon 3. I have cool. never played a Splatoon game. Neither have I. They, they don't draw my attention. Oh, look, it's a cool concept, especially to get, like, a shooter, mm. but not shoot people, and have the idea to actually be more to paint the level than shoot each other. Yeah. Like, you know, it's a cool concept, especially for the more child-friendly console that is the Nintendo's. Mm. Um, yeah, people like it. Have fun, guys. It's not yeah. my thing. I've yeah. just never had a chance to play it. I might enjoy it, but it's like, eh. 
I'll get to it one day, maybe. Mm. Uh, next up is Octopath Traveler 2. Uh, I mean, it's just an RPG game. Pretty much. I don't, I, the only the thing they have that usually that makes these ones stand out is they have a large cast of characters that are all over the world, so you can get embroiled in all kinds of little stories and things with different people, and you can use also, who you start as. And yeah, it's also a two D three D hybrid, so it has some nice depth to the look of it. Yeah, like, there's you know. It's not flat. You, you feel like it's 3D. And I'm actually kind of keen to give it a shot just on that art style. I think it could be quite engaging. I played Active Octopath Traveler 1, and the like the most the thing I liked the most about it was the art style. Like, it, yeah. legit, it, like, it does really well. Um, I think I might watch someone play Octopath Traveler 2. I don't know if yeah. I'd actually play it. Because I wasn't that blown away by Octopath 1. That makes sense. Uh, I think we got our next farming simulator. Yes. If you don't like the way they harvest carrots in the first one, here's the second one. (laughs) Yay! But this one looks more based around, you know, building a village and magic and and that kind of thing. Yeah. It's called. So it's interesting, and I I like the look of it. It's stylized and a bit cartoony, which is fun. Mm. It looks more multiplayer based. Yeah. Like yeah, multiplayer farming based, and it's got a little bit of dungeon crawling as well. So it, it gives I, me like Rune Factory vibes, which I like. Um, but being able to play it with friends, you know, is, is a good thing. I can, I'd be happy for that. Look, I think it's like it's going to sound like the dumbest criticism, but I think the game's got is a little too cutesy for me. Yeah. It is definitely aimed more at like kids and stuff. I think so. That's not to say that like if I sat down and played it, I wouldn't like. Oh my god, this is amazing. But, like, just looking at it, it's like, mm, I don't think I'm the target demo for this. There are certain people we know who would love this kind of game. Uh, oh, absolutely. <laughs> but we would not fall into that category. <clears throat> no. And next up is a game I have literally no idea how to pronounce the name of. It's a rhythm game, though. I, I'm not interested. Like, I'm, I'm super out. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. It's, it's Basically, it's Final Fantasy, but a rhythm game. It's, um... The at rhythm final bar get bar line. Yeah. It's, it's strange. Yeah. I and mean, if you like rhythm games, I'm sure you'll like this. Yeah. If you've got a, an old guitar hero controller, you'll probably be good at it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next up was a, another trailer for uh, the new Rabbids, uh, Mario Rabbids game. Cool. We already talked about it last time. We did trailers. Yeah. We, we enjoy like the Rabbids this. games. They're fun. Yeah. Uh, Looking forward it, to it. Is it multiplayer? Or is it single? Uh, probably the single. first game was single only, so I I don't know if they brought multiplayer in. I haven't said they brought multiplayer into it. Yeah, I I'd be hedging my bets and saying it's probably just single player. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, it's an XCOM. Are, we'll... Oh yeah, XCOM kind of thing. Chances are yeah. we'll pick it up and we'll all we'll play it. But mm. uh, so next up is our third farming game, Rune <laughs> Factory. <laughs> Which is dangerous for me because I played a lot of Rune Factory. And it's like, yeah. I can already feel the tug of this thing going, you could play more of Rune Factory. <laughs> On the go. On the go, and you can turn into the monster. It's like, please stop. Please. I need to sleep. Uh, uh, and it's coming sometime next year, so, you know. When Swoosh suddenly goes MIA, we know Rune Factory came out. The, I put it this way, what? I got so into these games for a while that I forgot to sleep for, like, periods of time. Like, it was bad. Watching the, the trailer for this, like, some of the assets look like uh, my first Unity game. Like, they yeah. just yeah. pulled random assets through, so it some of it doesn't mesh too well, but... I don't know, that just might be the aesthetic of the game, but it's... It's the most recent odd. aesthetic to it. Like, they didn't really transition to 3D very well with this series, uh, and that's kind of let them down a bit. Also, 64 games are coming. And we're getting a couple of different ones. Pilot Wings, Mario Party, Mario Party 2, Mario Party 3. <laughs> <laughs> and I believe you had some things to say about GoldenEye. So, like, there's a whole bunch of them coming out. The big one, though, they're big, like, oh my god, we finally got it, was Goldeneye. Hmm. 
Because um, that was in like hell for a while as to who actually owned the rights for it to where it would go and what was happening. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, in 1080. Fuck yeah, 1080 snowboarding. Loved it. Woo. I actually yeah, actually, I'm kind of keen for 1080 snowboarding. <laughs> I remember that being really fun, not going to lie. So, the thing that's happening with, with GoldenEye is there's two versions of it getting released. There was this announcement, and then, like, an hour after this direct happened, Xbox went, hey guys, we're getting it too! So, hmm. what's happening is the one that's going on the Switch is an emulated copy of the original game. Yeah. And because it's an emulated copy, it's able to do the fun jiggery pokery over the internets to allow you to do online multiplayer with this version of GoldenEye. Hmm. Because it's just going, oh, I'm going to pretend like you're all on the same console and not really give a fuck. Yeah. The Xbox version is a ground-to-top ground remake. It, 4K resolutions, better frame rates, twin-stick controls, the whole nine yards. Ooh. But because it's a remake, it doesn't have online capability. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it! So, like, the main thing people would have bought it for? No, no, you can't do that. I mean, it's coming to Game Pass, so I don't care. <laughs> and guaranteed first oh, yeah. patch. Like, it's. I'll, it's I'll still play the campaign because I absolutely love those games. But yeah, with full uh, twin streak control, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. But no more fucking C trying button to aim with the down. old C buttons. God damn! Oh fuck. So yeah, that that's just a weird quirk of apparently how they've been set up. Is the the Xbox One will have couch co-op, uh, couch multiplayer, but not online, and will look better and play better with a better frame rate and updated controls. But the original emulated one that's going to be shitty frame rates, bad controls, gets online multiplayer. You got to pick odd, one, but like, if you can do couch co-op, I uh, sorry, couch co-op, uh, you can't do couch co-op. I, I actually, did Goldeneye have Cash Yeah. 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 Oh, the, the original one had that, Cash that, that That'll still have it. The point is, none of the online functionality is there for the Xbox One. Okay. It's weird, but, you hmm. know, it's a thing. Yeah. Uh, what Next was up was Various Day things, Life. Which I have no idea what that is. Like, yeah, It looks I, like a typical JRPG. Yeah. yeah. But you just spend a lot of time. Like the trailer is mostly this guy running back and forth in the same town. It's like, what's happening? What are we doing? I don't know. I think it's you're running like, just doing generic stuff in a town. Hmm. But I don't. Know like, there there is a little things. bit of combat there, and it is very much classic JRPG. Yeah. Slightly yeah. animated, but that's about it. Uh, next up from that was the uh, Switch release of Factorio. Um, you know, forewarn this game is wicked addictive if you get into mm. it. If you don't and you bounce off, good for you. Um, I have lost <laughs> countless hours to Factorio. Um, there's a reason the community generally refers to it as Cracktorio. Yeah. There's, there's a reason I have not played this game. I've tried a lot of these, like, factory fucking games. And try as I might, I get probably an hour or two into it, and then it's like, I'm done with this I'm, that's I'll fair. probably never that's touch fair. it again like, there's a couple that I look at it's like I really want to get into this but I, I burn off for an hour yeah fair I mean the one I've probably sunk the most time into other than Factorio was Satisfactory um, I very much enjoyed that one I've come I've, so close to buying that like several times like, oh, that just looks so cool I'd love I'd want to play that and then I think about it as like an hour Ooh. later yeah. I'll, I'll probably never touch it again. Hmm. Uh, next up was Ib. I, like, honestly, like, straight up, I'm, like, nope this on Odd Style alone. Like, I don't like these, like, cheap... Um, it's, like, it's, it looks like an, a game made in the 90s. Like, yeah. Like, uh, paint. Which, yeah, I, you know, fair, but at the same time, it's like, it, I, I can't get into it. I've been spoiled by current games. I need, like, graphics, please. Yeah. Uh, Give me more like, pixels. I really hate saying that. I it's like, oh, I don't like this because I don't like the odd stuff. But I, it, it's really an off put for me, and I'm just, what? I'm not going to get over the line. That's the thing. We've played things like Thomas was alone, and that is mm. bare bones, bare bones graphics. Yeah, uh, and it's it was well such done. a good game. Oh. Yeah, it can be done really well, but that one, 
like at one point a level is literally just children's scribbles i'm like okay you're going for a specific style you're going into different paintings in the gallery and you know that makes sense but at the same time i don't think it's for me i'm sorry no so. no no i i'm i'm not a fan yeah and next is a game where mario once again tries to take over every game he can with uh, mario strikers yeah so, do you like FIFA? Mario's here now. So, I mean, yeah, it's just... but let I me mean, like the Strikers franchise isn't new. It's been no, around it's been for around. a while. Hell, this is just an advertisement for a new update that's coming. So, yeah, and yeah, they're getting the second new update, characters. two new characters. Yeah, eh, another game. I it looks cool. I'll never play it. Like yeah, Diddy Kong good. only exists now to be an add-in character. Yeah, kinda. Like, it, when will he I think get he's been in, been in more ca- more games as like a, a throwing character than has been in actual title games. I mean, the only title game he ever had was Diddy Kong Racing, which was great, by the way. I love that. Game. Uh, I mean, arguably Diddy Kong Quest. Oh yeah, true. I mean, like, that was Donkey Kong Country Diddy Kong Quest. So. I mean, all I want <laughs> is like, can we have Diddy Kong Racing like? remade for the current generation I, I want well, maybe maybe we'll get lucky and it'll be part of one of their 64 drops maybe uh, next up was the uh, Atelier Riser 3 it's a JRPG it, it's what it is it's a very pretty yeah. JRPG it is actually it's a very pretty one like for some um, reason you can cut down trees I'm assuming there's some kind of crafting mechanic uh, probably you can ride dolphins and dragons like if you like JRPGs, you're, you're probably going to love but, this. Yeah. What, what annoys me about all the like new JRPGs? They look really good, but why do the environments look so fucking bland? I don't like, know. It's very strange. They're just—it's like they've got a, a standard green grass paintbrush gone over some brown. And like, there's your land. That's all you're going to get. Like, it yeah. doesn't feel like there's anything in it. It just feels flat and plain. It's like we've moved from the forest biome to the forest biome. Yeah, like, please. Like, I don't know. I, I guess it's just they always put all their effort into like characters and their designs yeah. and the way they move and their visuals and blah 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 blah. And some monster designs and getting some cool shit. And then like, well, we're out of money for the environment texture. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I enjoy some of the games, but it, a lot of them just feel. I have to be in the right mood for a JRPG just because of all the reading. Yeah, hundred like, percent. Like, I, I, I get some people fucking love it. And occasionally I'm in the mood for that. But then I get to a point where I'm just skipping conversation because I want to get back to playing the game. Yep. Yeah, just like, gank that A button, get through it. All right, now give me the next fight. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. And then you get three fights later. Who the fuck is this guy talking to me? Why? <laughs> Why is Apparently- he like talking to me like he knows me? Oh, wait. <laughs> uh, next up was the next season pass patch for uh, Mario Kart Mario Deluxe. Kart. New, more new cards, courses. more tracks. You know, Mar- Mario Kart is a solid game. Like, it's always fun. It's hard to fuck up Mario Kart. Yeah, give Even us time. some carts. Give them Rainbow <laughs> Road. We're done. When Rainbow Road becomes like a, a payable thing that you have to pay for it separately, that's when we bail on Mario Kart. Yeah. Uh, next one was an update to uh, Switch Sports golfing. Yeah, Yay. it's a thing. I, I've never played any of the Switch Sports. Uh, no. Wii Sports <coughs> was fucking mint. I've never played one since. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and we next, got Pikmin Bloom. Uh, I, look, I, I'm like, really getting sick of these. Like, okay, I get it. It's a Pokemon Go clone. Like, that's. It's, not even, it it's not even a clone. It's by Nyantek. Oh, for fuck's sake. So they just slapped on a skin. Just like they did for Pokemon, just like they did for Jurassic Park, just like they did mm. for um, Harry Potter. I'm getting real. Like I get it. Niantic like hit the jackpot with Pokemon yeah. Go. They built off their previous uh, project. I can't remember what it was called off the top of my head. Um, I think it was just called Niantic, but I can't remember. It could be. Um, but the, look, I understand they Ingress. Have, like uh, their first game yeah, was, was Ingress. Ingress. So I played quite That's a bit of that. Yeah, yeah so did I. Um, that's why I was really excited with Pokemon Go because it's like, oh, we're going to evolve that. Okay, cool, let's go. Uh, Pokemon Go, um, if you went... Because in Ingress, you could actually set where the points were. Like, if you knew yeah. there was a local park or a local thing, mm. 
you could go there and take a photo of it and, and submit it to Ingress and then they would add it as a note in the game. Mm. But you couldn't do that in Pokemon Go. So if mm. you went back into the game, you could submit a node across the road from your house, wherever the hell you want. And if they added it, it would then update and appear in Pokemon Go. Ah! Yeah. Which people were doing for a while, which I found really <laughs> Yeah. Did not know about so, that. Yeah, that was a, a quick way to game the system for Pokemon yeah. Go. And then they uh, shut down Ingress so you could no longer update, which is yeah, a pain like, in the ass because it's such a good game. They caught yeah. on pretty quick for that one. <laughs> yeah. But, but like, I get it. They, they had this absolute phenomena for a while there. Like, I mean, I know people still play Pokemon Go, but, like, for a while there, like, everyone fucking played it. There was, yeah, like, ho- there was, like, mm-hmm. I remember down on, in, like, like we live in, in, we live near Brisbane, and I went down to South Bank one time, and there were, like, vendors who weren't in areas before who just set up just because all the Pokemon Go people were going through. Dude, they had and to that- public announcements telling people not to walk into places they shouldn't be. Yeah. yeah. Do not trespass uh, chasing Pokemon Go. <coughs> Fuck off. Yeah. Like, how dumb please do you not, have to be, really? Please do not play Pokemon Go in the cemetery. Yeah. Please do not play Pokemon Go in the car was a thing we had to remember. Oh, yeah. That's why they had to put that update out where the game wouldn't uh, count you as walking if you were over a certain speed. Yeah, yeah, you could just say, I'm a passenger, and it would still work. Yep. Which was um, weird. But we are getting so, a Pikmin 4, by the way. So, so I get it. They're, they're doing another one. It's a Pikmin thing. I'm just so over these fucking things. They oversaturated it after they got their first hit. And I don't care. I don't care even a little bit. Just They just wanted another hit of that fucking... Of the coke. It's like, just give me... Just one more, man. Just just one more. I just, mean, they the bugs are, are under the skin. Factories. I need one more. Yeah, they're just dopamine factories for people, I swear. It's people play them to get that little hit of dopamine and then they can keep going. It's like, hmm. that's... I, I get it but at the same time that's terrifying to me hmm. but as Switch pointed out we are actually getting another Pikmin game that's cool we haven't had a Pikmin game in a while I like Pikmin's but if you want something to scratch that uh, uh, that itch until 2023 Tiny King it, it's oh yeah Pikmin. yeah that is a really good game and currently on, pay- on uh, Game Pass uh, next up was their advertisement for Just Dance I don't care I, no, I don't dance just no, no dancing yeah, yeah. for me. Yeah, no, we're, we're, we're not about that life. Uh, I'm pretty next... sure if I dance, it's considered a war crime in certain countries. <laughs> I'm pretty sure if I got jiggling, I'd just be that sh- that thing from The Simpsons where Dr. Hibbert gets home and jiggling. <laughs> just keeps going. <laughs> Nurse, cancel my one o'clock. Uh, next up was Harvestella, which Another seems JFG. to be like... It's a JRPG with farming. Yay! More farming. I mean, it's one yeah. of the ones where they went a bit harder into the, the dungeon crawler aspect. And I get yes, that. It did. actually looks pretty neat. <coughs> um, so it's like JRPG or generic, you know, fighty game. Also, you go home and plant a few cabbages. Good for mm. you. It's like, that's weirdly something I kind of want to do. <laughs> uh, next up is the trailer for Bayonetta 3, and I am super hyped for Bayonetta 3. I, I don't think I've ever actually finished a Bayonetta game. I fucking love these games, but I love character action games, so... Yeah. I, I, absolutely nice. my jam. Yeah. It's fair. They always look fun, but it's something I'd, I'd rather watch someone play, because I suck at the controls for those for some reason. That's fair. Uh, next up after that was Master Detective Archive's Rain Code, which looks interesting. You're um, playing an amnesiac detective who has a little ghost friend. And you go into, like... Like, the ghost friend will let you recreate worlds to go hmm. and explore, to try and solve mysteries in. It's... I mean, look. It's made by the guys who made Danganronpa, okay? So, yeah. like, that should, like, help people understand what the fuck this thing is. It it's looks gonna fun. be weird. It looks like it's full of nonsense and, and fun things, and I'm kind of interested. Like, that could be, like, fun. Like, I know some people I'll probably point this at and be like, hey... You should definitely check this out because I know some people are big fans of Danganronpa. Yeah, um, I'm a bit so-so on it. Might check it out, might not. It's not super my jam. Uh, if you get some good reviews, I might have a squeeze though. It looks fun, but at the same time, not my thing. I might point some of our friends at it, and be like, "Hey, you should play this," and also maybe stream it so I can watch it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next yeah, up, I'll probably watch an hour on uh, on Twitch yeah. and 
That'll be about it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, next up, they're doing a cloud version of some of the Resident Evil games, which I'm guessing are too demanding for Switch. Yeah. So, here you go. You can play the new Resident Evils, but only if you can stream it, and that means they're useless in Australia. Oh, yeah. yeah. Then we have uh, a fighty game. It's actually a game that's been out for a while. Unfortunately, it's still currently in Epic Jail. Yeah. Uh, which means I might finally play it because it's coming to something other than Epic, and I don't want to give Epic my fucking money. Agreed. No. <laughs> um, Sifu said uh, it's a game where uh, every time you die, your amulet ticks down and you get older, but you get new abilities, so you get stronger as you age. Yeah. Um, you become more of a master. Yeah. But like your, like your health pool might decrease, but your special abilities will go up. Hmm. Um, it's interesting. Like I said, I wanted to check it out, but it's an epic jail. I'm not buying stuff from Epic. The second it gets out of that jail, though, I'm pretty sure all three of us went up buying it. Yeah. Well, like I said, now that it's coming to Switch, it's like, oh yeah, I might pick it up on Switch. I might actually finally fucking play Seafood. Yeah. Punchy punchy. Uh, next up was the uh, Crisis Core. It's the Final um, Fantasy VII prequel kind of yeah, thing, but the redone thing. with a new system. Like, since they made the remake to Seven, they're making the remake of the prequel uh, to bridge people until they get the second episode. And I. I like the look of this. It could be fun. And I liked 3 Maker 7, so... <laughs> I'm probably going to play it. Mm. Uh, next after that is a uh, really old style of game um, in the old uh, bullet hell genre. Yeah. Um, yeah. Radiant so Silver what, Gun. That's it's like, it's not something you really see too often anymore. Mm. <clears throat> no, it's like not. That, um, this style of genre, you don't see it much at all anymore. It, it once, went the way of, once arcade like, sort of dropped off a bit, you don't, yeah, don't really see it anyway. I think the last big one I remember seeing was Ikaruga? Yeah. That's yeah. Last and that had some really cool mechanics in it. Like, oh, change between the white and black. It was really cool. I always remember those games as being fun to play around in. Like, they were good time killers if you just wanted something simple and di uh, challenging. Like, it's odd, but I like them. Uh, next up is the Endless Dungeon. Which I'm seems to be this. a dungeon crawler in the Endless Universe, and I'm a big fan of that setting, so... Yep. I will definitely be picking this up. If we can play as a group, then definitely doing that thing. Uh, I think that's the whole point of it. You actually play, and I think it's a squad of three or four when they first announced it. Like, I think it's three. Everything in the trailer seems to be three. Yeah. It's like a Diablo-style dungeon crawler, but you've got your little hero unit, so... I know everything in the in the endless universe. I absolutely fucking love. Yeah. So far, they haven't messed us around. They've done pretty well. So we're willing to give them some leeway. Yeah. Uh, next up is a remaster of Tales of Symphonia JRPG. I never played it. I'm not that excited for a remaster. Never played that one either. There's a lot if of remasters and shit like this year. But... Yeah. I mean, we're kind of running through that kind of time, isn't it? Where people are mm. like, we're making something big, but we don't have anything to put out. Remaster some old shit. But this is also one of those ones that had like anime uh, cutscenes. Like hmm. they actually spent and some money. If like they that. if they actually did an anime of like the style of cutscenes, told the entire story in an anime, I'd watch the shit out of it because some of oh, the yeah. stories are pretty fucking cool. And the anim like the animation in the the cutscenes hmm. is awesome. But then you got to play the rest of the game. It's like uh, I'd rather just watch this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look, if you're a fan of Tales of Symphonia, cool. You got a thing. I'm not. Yeah. Yep. Uh, <laughs> life is strange. Was, yeah, the Life is Stranger, the, the sequel, I think, isn't it? No, it's the Arcadia Bay collection. It's just, like, all the stuff um, oh, fair. that's already out for it. I don't yeah, think I I've actually play played them, these so. games. Like, nah. I, I've watched some playthrough of it, and it's like, oh, this is some of the cringiest we think we know what teens say dialogue I've ever seen. Ah, <laughs> fair. Um... More I remasters. Speak. Yes, more JRPG remasters, because this is which needs its fodder. Yeah, I know. Uh, Romancing Saga Minstrel Song Remastered. I, that's a, that is a JRPG title if I've ever fucking seen one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then there's the new Lego thing where you can... Lego yeah. Brick Tales. There's yeah. actually a demo of this you can currently download on Steam. And Ooh. it gives you like the first mission or first level of it. I've played it through a couple of times and I thoroughly enjoyed it. So what well, do you do with that? Like, um, so you're put in 
well, there is an actual story to it, but you put it into a world and there's like parts of it where it's like, oh shit, how do we get up onto this ledge? And you can go to a point and then you're just given like a, a section that's usually about probably uh, 20 by 20 and you're given a handful of blocks. So you have to then build stairs or whatever bit you need for the world. Hmm. And there might be some tabs coming out so you're constrained to, all right, I have to build it so I can hit on this point, this point, and this point. So I can build the stairs to get up to this platform or... I need to build a, a cart that'll go across this fucking yeah. track. And, oh, and nice. I enjoyed it. I I played through it and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'll probably actually pick that one up when it comes out. It looks interesting. I'm not gonna lie, and I, I I love Lego, so I I'd, I'd recommend getting the demo on Steam to actually get a bit more of an idea because I've probably yeah. described that fucking horribly, but have a look at it. I'd recommend it. Yeah, and then there uh, was like Disney races. Yeah, a Disney Speed Storm. Yeah. Cool. It's another fucking like we've seen this weird resurgence of the kart racer. Guys, it's where no franchises go to die, apart from Mario, who somehow thrived. <laughs> Someone had to. Yeah. Um, Fall Guys is getting another season. I think the most surprising thing about that is anyone's bu- still playing Fall Guys. I'm pretty yep. sure like there's a few streamers who I think are just dedicated to it now, so they're just living for that. Which, Maybe fair point. It, well, it's also a... free to play, I think now. So, it dragged a whole heap of new people back in. Oh yeah, yeah. I'll do it. Uh, next up is Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe. This is another remake, but uh, I mean, but I like Kirby. Kirby games. Yeah, like, like I'm okay with a remake of Kirby things. Yeah, I, I still I need just... to play the new Kirby game where he just munches on things. Uh, yeah, I know. For, uh, Forgotten Land. Yeah, is that only um, on Switch or is that anywhere else? Yeah, no, that's only on Switch. Yeah, fair. I mean, it's a Kirby game. Yeah. True. <coughs> I mean, I'm interested in this, but, you know, like I said, I'm generally just interested in Kirby games. Despite <laughs> the fact that I'm, like, you know, bald, bearded, go to metal concerts, I'm like, yay, play the cute pu- purple, pink puffball game. Woo! <laughs> hey, I, I would not play them if they weren't so much fun. Like, it's, if they don't want me to play this game, stop making it fun. I know, right? Um, and the last thing we got was we got, finally got an actual trailer and the new title for the new Zelda game, um, hey. which is Tears of the Kingdom. So this is what we were all calling Breath of the Wild 2 until yeah. now, at which point it has a new title. Although it's got a bit of a, uh, what is it, uh, Skyward Sword vibe with all the floating islands. A little bit, yeah, which I, I'm kind of keen for. Look, if it's half of Breath of the Wild again, um, I mean, I'll be happy. I like oh, Breath yeah. of the Wild. That was Just a great game. don't make my weapons break. Yeah. Yeah. That's that. that's one thing I fucking hated about that game. I've got a Master Sword. Oh, it's broken. I need to go find another Master Sword. What the yeah. fuck? <laughs> yeah, no, I wasn't a fan of that. I mean, like, the mechanic makes sense in certain other systems, but why Zelda? Because that was the know. thing at the time. Like, there was a few games that came out around about that time frame that had the breaky weapons thing. Yeah, but, like, like, it, like you get reward items, and it's like, cool, this is good for ten hits. Yeah. yeah. That's not a like, reward. Sure, if you've got a, a stick, sure, a stick breaks. If you've got, like, at least give me a decent fucking use of it. But when you get the Master Sword or, like, the, the good fucking shield, it's like, this is going to last you for most of the game. Like... Mm. Make it worth fucking while. Like, there should only be one of those fucking things, not, it's broken. Let's go find another one. Well, I just, I, mean, found, I, like, I just ended up getting all the, using all the shit weapons and never using my good stuff because I didn't want to waste it. Yeah. And then you get into Ganon and it's like, oh, the only thing that can hurt him is the Master Sword. Oh, well, I guess I'm going to use that then. Yeah. Um, and that rounds out Nintendo. Um... And we are out past an hour, so we managed to ramble quite a while from that. But I did want to throw one extra thing in, because I remembered it while we were talking. Uh, There's a new Tron game getting made. Wait, really? Tron? Really? Yeah. Um, And they're looking to do a lot more story-based. You know who's making it? The guy who made Thomas Was Alone. Oh, my God. Really? Yeah. Oh, shit. It might actually have a decent story. Yeah, Yeah, I know, right? I'm kind of keen for that. Yeah. So yeah. That, that's Tron Identity. It's supposed to be coming out next year. I'm just happy he's doing more things. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's actually done a bunch of stuff that I think a lot of people just didn't play. 
Yeah. Because <laughs> um, he did um, Subsurface Cir- uh, Circular and uh, Quarantine Circular and mm-hmm. uh, John Wick Hex. Uh, gotcha. John Wick Hex was actually pretty good. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I, when you mentioned Thomas was alone earlier, I'm like, there's that thing I remember that he's doing now and we should <laughs> talk about it. Look, put it this way, that game was good enough that when I got the new computer, the first game I downloaded again was Thomas Was Alone, because it's been so long since I played it. Ah, so good. But yeah, so we're going to be able to run in, run around in the world of Tron, but, you know, with the story writing of Thomas Was Alone, hopefully. Awesome. Yeah. That actually sounds quite appealing. I'm, I'm looking forward to that now. Yeah, and on that mild. nice high note, I think we're done for the day. <laughs> yeah, Excellent. Have a good one, guys. Bye, everyone. You too. See ya.